Hi, it's Sarah. I'm here, finally. Um, the first thing that I want to tell you is I'm so excited. <clears throat> I have a new setup. So I've got that, this arm thing that holds my phone. So you no longer have to look at my double chin. I, the camera hopefully will stay still, although I'm probably moving the table. And I should be able to see in the group if you have any questions for me. Hopefully this is how it's going to work. I can actually see myself which is all very cool, but I can't see. Okay, there we go. It's all working now. Um, so I want to go on to talk about another ability today, actually. So we've talked about um, introvert, extrovert, or introversion, extroversion. We've talked about whether your child's a generalist or a specialist. And now I want to talk about time frame orientation. Oh, that piece of hair is really annoying me um, because it's really, really important time frame orientation. Um, and when you know it, you might stop making your children wrong. Um, time frame orientation is actually the ability to think into the future. Now, there is this belief that teens can't see past their nose. And it is absolutely true that, that while these changes in the brain happen, that future planning is affected. But that doesn't affect time frame orientation because you can do the test for this on anyone that's over the age of 14 and it has no impact on it's not weighted at all for whether a child's a teenager or not so if you think of time frame orientation like a continuum so you've got zero to 100 which you have and that's how it comes out um, you can you've got people at the low end normally about 0 to 25 percent people in the middle 25 to 50 and then you know the higher end now it's so important that you know this about your your, your child and, and I think you can work out. I don't think you need to um, have taken the test, basically. I think you can work out. Obviously, if you've taken the test, you know for sure. Hoping that something doesn't get delivered as well. Just remember that we're expecting some deliveries. So if I have to cut it short quickly, that's why. Um, okay, so at the bottom end of time frame orientation, you have what we call a tactician. So somebody that thinks really tactical, like what are we going to do next? What are we going to do tomorrow? And is often like thinking about sort of six months into the future. At the mid range, you've got someone who's probably thinking two-ish years into the future. So, um, you know, it, it, you know, what, what am I going to do in the next two years? Or how is this going to affect me in the next two years? At the high end of time frame orientation, you've got people who are going five to 10 to 15 years in the future. I've got a very, very high time frame. It's 85%. I actually, in all of the time I've done the Highlands test, I've never found someone higher than me. Um, so I don't know what that means. So at the, the, the top end, you've got your strategists. Now, if you think about it, we need tacticians, we need strategists, and we need people that can do the mid. So there's nothing wrong or right about any of them. So for example, somebody at the um, high end, a strategist, so we, we all think time frame or in, orientation long term is great, but it isn't, because those high, long term time frame people will often work towards a goal for so long without any reward, and they'll get there and think, well, did I really want this? And that, that's me. And I can work for years without seeing any reward at all and then suddenly get somewhere and think, well, why am I even doing this? Do I even want to do this anymore? So strategists have their own challenges. Tacticians at the low end have their own challenges because they're never future planning. So it's always like, what's next? What's the next hit? Um, and they want reward. So if they're not seeing results very, very quickly for their work, they, they, give, um, they, give, they give up more easily because they really do need to be rewarded. So obviously this impacts young people a lot. And actually what we're doing with them in, their, in the teen years is we're actually mostly asking them all to be strategists and think way far into the future. And if they aren't, we call them lazy. So anytime a parent comes to me and tells me they're child lazy, I think oh, it's just a kid with long-term, uh, short-term time frame. Um, because they can come across as lazy, lazy and lethargic. They leave everything to the last minute. It's quite chaotic. It's a bit of a panic. And um, if you don't work that way, you're just like, oh, why didn't you plan? Um, and it affects everything. So it will affect, affect blah, blah, it will affect, um, revision planning, for example. So someone with a long term time frame is going to start revising much, much earlier, be able to go much longer um, without 
you know, wanting to know if they've improved or they can just keep going pretty much. Someone with short term typhoon is probably going to start later. They're probably going to need to be tested more to see if they're improving more because they need to see that. In oh, there's a bit of a wobble there. So it does wobble. Um, so they want to see that improvement. Um, it goes for any kind of let's if we look at university applica applications. So your um, your child, if they've got long term time frame, they are probably thinking about university and what they're going to do at kind of year nine or ten. And they are pretty sorted. They will have everything sorted by the time the UCAS application opens and they will just put it all in because they they've looked through universities before they know exactly what they're doing it's all planned um, and they've put their application in as soon as the deadline opens someone with mid-range time frame might start thinking about university when they start this um, a levels they will get their application in but it probably won't be as soon as it opens but you know it won't be a panic or anything the people with short-term time frame literally they may be doing the application the night before it's due um, and it's a bit chaotic and it's a bit, you know, it's just, it would drive me mad actually. I do have, one of my, ch my children has got short term time frame, the other's got long term. So the older one's got long term, because uh, I know because I've tested them, and the um, younger one is, is slightly, it's like mid, mid range. And it drives me mad because I'm such a long term time frame person. So it really does impact everything. Now, and what we have to think is it's not a child being lazy. Um, if they've got short term time, it's actually so difficult to have them to think long term. The same as it's really difficult for someone who's long term time frame to think short term. So if you ask me, what am I doing tomorrow? Well, obviously, it's Saturday, but, you know, what am I doing the next day I'm at work? Uh, actually, I don't know. I was having a conversation with um, my business partner actually the other day. And I was telling her what I wanted to achieve and where I want the business to be in 10 years and blah, blah, blah. And she said, well, how are you going to do that? What are you going to do this year? And I was like, well, I don't know. And and it's really hard. And she has to help me really chunk it down because uh, her time frame is shorter than mine. And it's it's like a struggle for me. It's like someone is talking a different language. And it's the same, you know, with children. It's not something we can learn to do. It's really, really hard. Um and so what often ha has to happen is that child, if they've got a short term time frame, they need someone with medium or long term time frame to come in and help them. They are going to need a lot of organisation and a lot of planning. And it's not because they're lazy. It's because they are, sh you know, have short term time frame. If your child has short term time frame, you need to treat everything like a really short term project. So, OK, so universities is a three month project. Um, and let's, you know, let's see where we are every, every month. You know, you need to just keep, they need to know that they are making progress and they need to see rewards. And I, I'm not talking about you rewarding them by buying something, but they need to know that they're making progress. Whereas your long term time frame person has probably been thinking about that for five years and really doesn't, you know, and they'd probably think for another five and not make progress and they would be OK with it. So I think this is an important one we know because I, I think kids are made wrong a lot or they're, you know, like, why can't you think about what you want to do in the future? Why is it so difficult for you? Well, it might be because they've got short term time frame. Um, so please don't call these kids lazy um, that you will know if you've got someone who's short. It's last minute. It's all a bit crazy. It's all a bit manic. It gets even worse if you as the parent have got short term time frame, too, because then we've got chaos in a house. And sometimes I go into people's houses where they've got short term time frame, everyone. And I'm just like pulling my hair out because it's so hard for me. Um, and actually, there's a few projects that I'm doing at the moment with my eldest daughter. And um, they are such short term. And both of us are very stressed out often by it because we there is not enough time for us to plan. And it's like oh my God, it's like happening and it's just, you know, there and we've got to do it tomorrow. And, and it's a really difficult way for me, me to kind of function. And so also it has an impact on the kind of jobs, careers they want to go into. So you don't want to send a strategist into, a, you know, a job like a, a journalist or, you know, or, you know, like a, a, a tabloid journalist where it's quick. You've got to produce it. You've got to get it ready by tomorrow. It's, uh, da, da. it's really stressful. Last year I spent the year trying to understand well understanding PR and getting myself in um PR and it was the most difficult thing I ever did 
really because it's so short term time frame. So, you know, it might be that a long term time frame person would go into something like investi investigative um, journalism, which can often take much, much longer. But, you know, just or documentary making or, or something. Um, sim similarly, you don't want to be having your um, long short term time frame person be in a job where they're trying to st strategically. It's, that's a hard word to say. Strategically plan for you know a project that's five years in the future or plan the way the business is going to go in 10 years or something because they'll just be scratching their heads so something that you um that we do really really need to know so i'm going to stop talking there but i'm going to about time frame but i'm going to tell you about how all the bits that we've just talked about um gel together so we've got generally specialist extrovert introvert time frame doesn't come into this but um i just want to tell you how i explain this to young people so i think it might help you so the combination of a generalist specialist extrovert introvert makes up four different types so you've obviously got your generalist um extrovert me you've got your generalist um introvert you've got your specialist extrovert and your specialist introvert and they kind of make up four different personal styles i like to think of them in terms of film because i love film and it's easy to explain to a young person so if you look at it in terms of film if you have a generalist extrovert they would be the director of the film so generalist extroverts are generally the leader so they they know a lot of things about a lot of subjects they love people and they generally love being in teams so they tend to be the leaders um, of the situation because of their generalist knowledge and their extroversion so they would be the director of the film um, the jet the specialist extrovert God, it's so complicated to remember all this the specialist extrovert so this is someone with a specialist knowledge that likes to be with people this is a like the actor of the film this this um type is actually called the performer so this is where you, you know your speakers that are your TED Talks, your speakers on name would be generally be specialist extroverts. A lot of performers and actors are specialist, sorry, oh, you said generalist, specialist extroverts. So they've got this specialist knowledge, um, but they're an extrovert, so they want to be people. So you've got the director and the actor. Um, and then you have the producer. This would be your generalist introvert. So they have a generalist knowledge, but they kind of like to be the power behind the throne. So they don't necessarily want to be leading it, but they want to be sat there organising, not organising it all, but you know what I mean, the power behind the throne. So that's where your, general, your generalist introvert sits. And then you've got your specialist introvert, which I would call the researcher or the professor type. So this is somebody that is literally probably going to be locked in an office by themselves looking at data and things like that um so i think it's important to know that they make up you know different types now i'm not saying that that's exactly where everybody needs to go um but it's really helpful if you're helping your child plan you know okay so are they a generalist or a specialist are they an extrovert or an introvert and then does that put them in the kind of the director role or the actor role or the producer role or the kind of the researcher role now they are very generalistic but you can see what i mean and then that would help you kind of maybe guide them so you know f for example if a um a specialist extrovert was looking at a specialist job that had them stuck in their own office all day they would be really miserable so so it's it's things that we can start talking to them about so i just wanted to put that bit in there too um next time if there's no questions for me to answer i will start going on to what are called driving abilities um these might be a little bit more difficult for you to figure out with your child but i i think it's important for us to start even thinking about them um and and you can kind of work them out um obviously the test is the best way but i think it's it's a great thing to start talking about because i don't hear anyone talking about this a lot and they do have a real impact so whew, i didn't cough once i've been i've had this dreadful cough and i've um thought i won't get through this without coughing but i did so i'm gonna leave you any i don't know when i'm gonna be live next week now i can look at my computer while i'm talking to you let me just have a look 
think it might be, I don't want to make it Monday because that's too soon. Um, uh, let's, I'm going to do it uh, when I normally do it, which is Thursday. I'm even putting it in the Thursday at one. I will be live. So if you've got any questions for me, then please do um, answer them. And I hope this is helpful. Um, if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about, then please do let me know. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye.